it is with pleasure that I present the 2021 federal budget proposal to this June session of the National Assembly. Distinguished and honorable leaders and members of the National Assembly, at this juncture, I wish to commend your tremendous efforts in approving the revision of the 2020 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper and passage of the 2020 Appropriation Repeal and Amendment Act in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Today marks an important occasion in our quest to accord the federal budget process the seriousness it deserves. In line with our commitment, we have worked extra hard to ensure early submission of the 2021 to 2023 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper, as well as the 2021 appropriation bill. It is my sincere hope that the National Assembly will pass this bill into law early enough to enable implementation by 1st January 2021, given the collaborative manner in which the budget was prepared. In the course of this address, I will present the highlights of our budget proposals for the next fiscal year. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planner will later provide the full details of these proposals. The 2021 budget was prepared amidst a challenging global and domestic environment due to the persistent headwinds from the coronavirus pandemic. The resulting global economic recession, low oil prices, and heightened global economic uncertainty have had important implications for our economy. The Nigerian economy is currently facing serious challenges, with the microeconomic environment being significantly disrupted by the coronavirus pandemic. Real growth domestic product growth declined by 6.1% in the second quarter of 2020. This enabled, this ended the year, the three-year trend of positive but modest real GDP growth recorded since the second quarter of 2017. I'm glad to note that through our collective efforts, our economy performed relatively better than that of many other developed and emerging economies. GDP growth is projected to be negative in the third quarter of this year. As such, our economy may lapse into the second recession in four years with significant adverse consequences. However, we are working assiduously to ensure a rapid recovery in 20. 21. We remain committed to implementing programs to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. A secures deficits limit employment opportunities in the formal economy. Various skills development programs are being implemented simultaneously to address this problem frontally. For instance, the government is implementing the Social Public Works Program to provide employment opportunities to 774,000 youth across the 774 local government areas of Nigeria. We have also recently introduced the 75 billion Naira Youth Investment Fund of which 25 billion Naira have been provided in 2021 budget. 
We thank all Nigerians for your perseverance and continued support during these difficult times. We remain unwavering in our commitment to actualize our vision of a bright future for everyone. Distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly, you will recall that the 2020 budget of sustaining growth and job creation was amended in response to recent fiscal pressures. I am glad to report that these efforts enabled us to effectively respond to the public health challenges of coronavirus outbreak and moderate the economic impact. Pursuant to our revised assumptions, the amended 2020 budget was based on a benchmark oil price of 28 United States dollars per barrel, oil production of 1.8 million barrels per day, and exchange rate of 360 naira to one United States dollar. Based on these budget parameters, aggregate revenue of 5.84 trillion naira was projected to fund 10.81 trillion naira in expenditure. The projected deficit of 4.98 trillion naira or 3.57% of GDP is expected to be financed mainly by borrowing. In 2020, average daily oil production was 1.88 million barrels per day up to June, as against the revised estimate of 1.8 million barrels per day for the entire year. However, the market price of Boni Light crude averaged 4.79. I read that again. However, the market price of Boni Light crude averaged 40.79 United States dollars per barrel, significantly higher than the revised benchmark price of 28 United States dollars per barrel. As at July 2020, the federal government's actual revenue available for the budget was 2.1 trillion naira. This revenue performance was only 68% of our prorated target in the revised 2020 budget. At 992.45 billion naira, oil revenue performed well above our budget target by 168%. Non-oil tax revenues totaled 622.8 trillion, I read that again. Non-oil tax revenues totaled 622.8 billion Naira, which was 73% of the revised budget, 73% only of the revised budget. To improve independent revenue performance, I have directed that the cost profiles of government-owned enterprises should be scrutinized and limits imposed on their cost to revenue ratios. Supervising ministers have also been directed to ensure closer monitoring of the revenue generating activities and expenditures of the government-owned enterprises. On the expenditure side, as at the end of July 2020, a total of 5.37 trillion Naira had been spent as against the prorated expenditure of 5.82 trillion Naira. Accordingly, deficit was 3.27 trillion Naira. This represents 66% of the revised budgeted deficit for the full year. Despite these challenges, we met our debt service obligations. We are also up to date on the payment of structural transfers and staff salaries, while overhead costs have been significantly covered. 
for the first time in recent years, we commence the implementation of this year's capital budget in the first quarter. As at 15 September 2020, a total of about 1.2 trillion naira had been released for capital projects. Every federal MDA, that's ministries, departments, and agencies, has received at least 50% of its 2020 capital expenditure budget in line with my earlier directives. Let me emphasize that revenue generation remains our major challenge. Nevertheless, government is determined to tackle the persistent problems with domestic resource mobilization. If there is a limit to deficit financing through borrowing, the time has come for us to maintain a healthy balance between meeting our growing expenditure commitments and our long-term public financial health. Over the last year, this administration has implemented several priority projects. I am happy to report that much progress has been made on several fronts, and our government has delivered on key policies, programs, and projects in these priority areas. In agriculture, we have recorded appreciable success in rice and other crops mainly through the Anchor Borrowers Program and the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, anchored by the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, respectively. We are also accelerating the construction of 337 rural roads around key agricultural corridors to enhance access to market and reduce post-harvest losses. These efforts have reduced the adverse impact of coronavirus on our food availability, prices, and security. We have made progress on the railway project, connecting different parts of the country. The lagos Ibadan line will soon be operational. The Abuja Kaduna line is running efficiently. The Itape Ajakuta line was finally completed after over 30 years since it was initiated and commissioned now in September 2020. Arrangements are underway to complete the Ibadan Kano line. Also, work will soon commence on the Port Harcourt to make the Guru Line and Calabar Lagos Coastal Line, which will connect the south, the south, the southern and southeastern state to the north, and the south south as well as southeast to the north and southwest respectively. The second Niger Bridge is at about 46 percent completion. We hope to commission the project before the end of our tenure in 2023. We have awarded several contracts to rehabilitate, reconstruct, and construct major arterial roads in order to reduce the hardship to commuters and increase economic activity. To bridge the infrastructure deficit, we are also implementing innovative financing strategies to full in private sector investment. The infrastructure company, which I recently approved, will become a world-class infrastructure development vehicle, wholly fully focused on making critical infrastructure investments in Nigeria. This infrastructure company will raise funding from the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, the Africa Finance Corporation Pension 
funds, as well as local and foreign private sector development financiers. Under the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme, we are undertaking the construction and rehabilitation of over 780 kilometers of roads and bridges, of roads and bridges nationwide to be financed by the grant of tax credits to invest in businesses. Ongoing projects under this scheme include A, construction and rehabilitation of Lakoja Obajana Kabba Iloran Road, Section 2, Obajana Kabba in Kogi and Kuala States. B, construction of Apapa to Owo Shuki Ojota Expressway in Lagos State, and C, construction of Bodo Boni Road with a bridge across the Opobo Channel in River State. To enhance good governance, we strengthen our anti-corruption agencies to ensure they work independently and jointly while respecting the rule of law. We have also worked to address emergent cases of insecurity and insurgency nationwide with innovative approaches. Our security operatives in the Niger Delta, North Central, and Northwest are yielding desired results. We are determined to get rid of bandits, kidnappers, and criminal behavior from our midst. Distinguished senators, honorable members, let me now turn to the 2021 appropriation bill, which is designed to further deliver on the goals of our economic sustainability plan. This plan provides a clear roadmap for our post-coronavirus economic recovery as a transitional plan to take us from the economic recovery and growth plan 2017 to 2020 to the successor medium-term national development plan 21 to 25. In view of many challenges confronting us, we must accelerate our economic recovery process, promote social inclusion, and strengthen the resilience of the economy. The 2021 appropriation has, therefore, been themed the budget of economic recovery and resilience. It is expected to accelerate the pace of our economic recovery, promote economic diversification, enhance competitiveness, and ensure social inclusion. Distinguished members of the National Assembly, the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper set out the parameters for the 2021 budget, which include a benchmark oil price of 40 United States dollars per barrel, b daily oil production estimate of 1.86 million barrels per day, inclusive of condensates of 300,000 to 400,000 barrels per day. C, exchange rate of 379 Naira per United States dollar, and D, gross domestic product growth projected at 3% and inflation closing at 11.95%. Distinguished and honorable members, I have directed the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planner to finalize the Finance Bill 2020, which will be forwarded for your kind consideration and passage into law shortly after today's 2021 budget presentation. The Finance Bill is to support the realization of our 2021 revenue projections 
adopt appropriate counter cyclical fiscal policies and enhance the efficiency of fiscal incentives. In accordance with the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007, we will prepare and publish a tax expenditure statement for 2019. The 2019 statement will be the first of these annual statements, setting out the estimated cost of tax exemptions, incentives, and rebates provided under Nigeria's revenue and other laws. The 2019 statement is expected to contribute to public discussion on the use of our tax policies and systems to achieve socio-economic development. Based on the foregoing fiscal assumptions and parameters, total federally distributable revenue is estimated at 8.433 trillion naira in 2021. Today, to total revenue available to fund the 2021 federal budget is estimated at 7.886 trillion naira. This includes grants and aid of 354.85 billion naira as well as the revenues of 60 government-owned enterprises. Oil revenue is projected at 2.01 trillion naira. Non-oil revenue is estimated at 1.49 trillion naira. As you will observe, the format of the 2021 appropriation bill has been modified to include budgeted revenues, no matter how small, for each MDA, that's a ministry, departments, and uh, agencies, to focus on internal revenue generation. Accordingly, I implore you to pay as much attention to the revenue side as you do to the expenditure side. In aggregate expenditure of 13.08 trillion naira is proposed for the federal government in 2021. This includes 1.35 trillion naira spending by government-owned enterprises and grants and aid-funded expenditures of 354.85 billion naira. For 2021, the proposed 13.08 trillion naira expenditure comprises a non-debt recurrent cost of 5.65 trillion naira, b personal costs of 3.76 trillion naira, c pensions, gratuities, and retirees benefits of 500. Point one nine billion naira. D overheads of six hundred and twenty five point five billion naira. E debt service of three point one two four trillion naira. Debt service, I will repeat again, debt service of three point one two four trillion naira. F statutory transfers of four hundred and 84.49 billion naira. G, sinking fund of 220 billion naira to retire certain maturing bonds. The 2021 budget deficit, inclusive of government-owned enterprises and projected loans is projected at 5.2 trillion naira. 5.2 trillion naira. This represents 3.64% of estimated GDP, slightly above the 3% threshold set by the Fiscal 
Responsibility Act 2007. It is, however, to be noted that we still face the existential challenge of coronavirus pandemic and its aftermath. I believe that this provides a justification to exceed the threshold as provided for by this law. The deficit will be financed mainly by new borrowings, totally 4.28 trillion naira, 205.15 billion naira from privatization proceeds and 709.69 billion naira in drawdowns on multilateral and bilateral loans secured for specific projects and programs. The sum of 484.49 billion naira provided for statutory transfers in the 2021 budget represents an increase of 56.46 billion naira or 13 percent over the revised 2020 provision. The, stru the structural transfer provisions are A, Niger Delta Development Commission, 63.51 billion naira. B, Northeast Development Commission, 29.7 billion naira. C, National Judicial Council, 110 billion naira. D, Universal Basic Education Commission, 70.05 billion naira. E, Independent National Electoral Commission, 40 billion naira. F, National Assembly. F, National Assembly. <laughs> 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 <coughs> yeah. Well, I will read that again. <laughs> F, National Assembly, 128 billion naira. G, <laughs> G, Public Complaints Commission, 5.2 billion naira. H, Human Rights Commission, 3 billion naira. And I, basic health care provision fund, 35.03 billion naira. In compliance with the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007, all beneficiaries of statutory transfers will be required to provide the budget office of the Federation with periodic, with periodic reports on the allocation and expenditure of funds for inclusion in the quarterly budget implementation report. In our efforts to enhance national security and human capital development, a major part of the 2021 recurrent cost estimate is allocated to paying salaries and overheads in MDAs providing these critical public services. These include A, 227.02 billion naira for the Ministry of Interior. B, 441.39 billion naira for the Ministry of Police Affairs. C, 545.1 billion naira for the Ministry of Education, D, 840.5 billion and 45 billion naira for Ministry of Defense, E, 380.21 billion naira for Ministry of Health. Personal costs is still our largest single item of expenditure. In seven months to 31st July 2020, it accounted for 34% of 
of total federal government spending and is projected at 33% of 2021 expenditure. To check the incidence of payments to non-existent personnel and unauthorized allowances, only federal staff that had been captured on the integrated personnel payroll information system platform will receive salaries. All agencies have been directed to ensure that they obtain all necessary approvals before embarking on any fresh recruitment. Any breach of these directives will be severely sanctioned. We remain committed to meeting our debt service obligations. Hence, we have provided 3.12 trillion naira for this in 2021, representing an increase of 445.57 million naira from 2.68 trillion naira in 2020. A total of 2.183 trillion naira has been set aside to service domestic aid, to service domestic debts, while 940.89 billion naira has been provided for foreign debt service. 220 billion naira is provided for transfers to the sinking fund to pay off mature bonds issued to local contractors and creditors. Total overhead costs of MDAs and government-owned enterprises are projected to rise to 625.5 billion naira in 2021, mainly due to the inclusion of the overheads of an additional 50 government-owned enterprises. Overhead provisions have also been made for newly created agencies. To keep to a tap on running costs, MDAs must adhere to extent expenditure controls. An aggregate sum of 3.85 trillion naira is expected to be available for capital projects in 2021, as summarized below. A, 1.8 trillion naira for MDA's capital expenditure. B, 745 billion naira for capital supplementation. C, 355 billion naira for grants and aid funded projects. D, 20 billion naira for the Family Homes Fund. E, 25 billion naira for the Nigeria Youth Investment Fund. F, 336 billion naira for 60 government owned enterprises. G, 247 billion naira for capital component of statutory transfers. H, 710 billion naira for projects funded by multilateral and bilateral loans. The 2021 capital budget is 1.15 trillion naira, higher than the 2020 provision of 2.69 trillion naira. At 29% of aggregate expenditure, the provision moves closer to this administration's policy target of 30%. Capital expenditure in 2021 remains focused on the completion of as many ongoing projects as possible, rather than the commencement of new ones. We have also made efforts to ensure equity in the distribution of projects and programs in the proposed budget. I will be providing the National 
Assembly a list of some of the most critical projects which we must work collectively to ensure they receive adequate funding. Until projects reach completion, they do not deliver the, the dividends of democracy that Nigerians rightly deserve. Key capital spending allocation in 2021 budget include a power 198 billion naira inclusive 150 billion naira for the power sector recovery plan b works and housing 440 billion naira c transportation 200 and 56 billion naira. D, defense, 121 billion naira. E, agriculture and rural development, 110 billion naira. F, water resources, 153 billion naira. G, industry, trade, and investment, 51 billion naira. H, education. 127 billion naira. I, Universal Basic Education Commission, 70 billion naira. J, Health, 132 billion naira. K, Zonal Intervention Project, 100 billion naira. And L, Niger Delta Development Commission, 64 billion naira. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development will facilitate the integrated development of its sector by promoting corpse value chains, as well as providing rural roads, water and sanitation, veterinary and pest control, grazing, food strategic reserves, and access to inputs and extension services. The 157% increase in capital allocation to the health sector is to enhance the capacity to deliver health care services through the procurement of equipment, vaccines, and other facilities. Two centers of excellence, as well as one accident and emergency center, will be equipped in federal teaching hospitals in each geopolitical zone. In addition, numerous primary health care centers will be equipped and upgraded across the six geopolitical zones. Furthermore, funds have been allocated for the expansion of midwives service scheme in the six geopolitical zones. To enhance occupational safety, funds have been provided for the provision of personal protective equipment for health workers. The Ministry of Education's capital allocation has been increased by 65% to improve the education of our children. Funds have been provided for the provision of scholarship awards to Nigerian students at home and abroad. We have provided funds for the upgrade of security and other infrastructural facilities in our university colleges nationwide. To improve access to education, we have made provision for the establishment of five new federal science and technology and technical colleges. We have also provided for the payment of allowances to 5,000 teachers under the federal teachers scheme. In line with our commitment to invest in transportation infrastructure, capital allocation to the works and housing sector is to facilitate the completion of several critical projects in 2021. I have directed the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning to provide a detailed breakdown of key infrastructural projects in her subsequent 
press briefing. Key projects for the implementation in the power sector include several rural electrification projects, the 36 states and Awuja, rural electrification access program in federal universities, the Kaduna LPFO gas fired power plant, the Mambila hydro power project, and the Zingelu hydro power project. Provision has been made for legacy that's owned to local contractors, compensation and resettlement of project affected communities. The renewable energy, micro utility solar project, and the construction of transmission lines and substations nationwide. These projects implementation is expected to have positive impact on electricity supply nationwide, as well as both productivity and employment. Projects to be implemented by the Ministry of Water Resources in 2021 include provision of portable water in the Northeast, construction of irrigation and dams across the country, and the provision of water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities. The Ministry of Transportation has earmarked funds for projects such as the Lagos Ibadan Kano Line, Abuja Kaduna Line, Port Harcourt Maiduguri Line, and the Itape Ajakuta Wari Line. These projects, when completed, will minimize the cost of transporting people and goods around the country. To maintain the peace in the Niger Delta region for economic and social activities to thrive, the provision of 65 billion Naira for the presidential amnesty program has been retained in the 2021 budget. In addition, the sum of 63.5 billion Nara has been appropriated for the Niger Delta Development Commission and 24.47 billion Nara has been provided for the capital project of the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. These allocations should further support the development of the region by facilitating the completion of important ongoing projects such as the east-west road. The government is already implementing several measures to overcome our fiscal constraints. In addition to the strategic revenue growth initiatives, we are leveraging tech technology and automation as well as more effective monitoring of independently generated revenues. Our efforts are aimed at addressing revenue leakages and redirecting scarce resources to the poor and vulnerable. These efforts include A, deregulation of the price of petroleum products, B, ongoing verification exercise with IPPIS, and C, implementation of service-based electricity tariffs. The new petrol pricing regime has freed up resources that was allocated to subsidize petroleum products. Similarly, the ongoing IPPIS verification exercise has closed gaps that encourage ghost workers or pensioners. The service reflective electricity tariffs will help resolve the liquidity crisis in the power sector and make the sector attractive to foreign investment. These reforms have released trillions of Naira for allocation to other priority areas. Distinguished senators, honorable members, permit me to reiterate that the main thrust of our capital spending 
program in 2021 is the completion of as many ongoing projects as possible across the country. Accordingly, we have prioritized projects that can be rapidly completed to benefit our people. Distinguished senators and honorable members, I note with satisfaction your determination to promptly consider and pass the Petroleum Industry Bill into law. The enactment of this bill will boost confidence and attract further investment into our oil and gas sector, as well as increase revenues. I fully understand the difficulties many of our people are going through with the implementation of our reform agenda. However, the measures we are implementing are necessary for sustainable public finance, better allocation of our scarce resources, and improved public service delivery. As we implement these reforms, social safety nets will be implemented to cushion the effect of the most vulnerable of our citizens, as well as business owners. In furtherance of our inclusiveness agenda, the sum of 420 billion naira has been provided to sustain the social investment program. 20 billion naira has also been set aside for the Family Homes Fund, our social housing program. We have expanded our national social register to include an additional 1 million Nigerians following the onset of coronavirus. We recently introduced the 75 billion Naira survival fund program to support and protect businesses from potential vulnerabilities. Furthermore, the Central Bank of Nigeria is reducing the interest rate on its intervention facilities for 9% to 5% with one year moratorium to 31st March 2021 to provide concessional lending of a 100 billion naira to households and small businesses, b 100 billion naira to the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry, and c 1 trillion naira to large agricultural and manufacturing businesses. We urge Nigerian businesses and individuals to make the most of these concessional credit facilities and other such opportunities. Mr. Senate President, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable members of the Ninth National Assembly, let me use this opportunity to again commend your firm commitment towards ensuring a very harmonious and productive relationship with the executive. It is important to further deepen this relationship in the interest of our people. As you review the 2021 budget estimates, we believe the legislative process will be expedited to ensure its prompt passage, its prompt passage to sustain the restoration of a predictable January December fiscal year. In this regard, I have directed all ministers and heads of agencies to be personally available for budget defense. Let me re-emphasize that Nigerians expect that the 2021 budget will contain only implementable and critical projects, which, when completed, will significantly address current structural challenges of the economy, improve the business environment, and accelerate economic recovery. May I congratulate, or oh, may I con conclude my remarks by commending the National Assembly for its support 
in steering our economy during these very challenging times. We remain committed to sustaining this partnership. We believe that as we work together, we will jointly deliver on our joint mandate to our people. It is with great pleasure, therefore, that I lay before this distinguished joint session of the National Assembly the 2021 budget proposal of the federal government of Nigeria for your consideration. I thank you for your attention. May God, may God continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.